I'm Don Peterson of the Swing Factory Golf Center, Woodstock, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. Uh, as a teacher, you try to come up with uh, different ways to explain things to people. I have two analogies I'm going to share with you today um, that, that help me explain centrifugal force to my students. And uh, centrifugal force is a good thing. If you can use it to your advantage in the golf swing, it can, it can help you quite a bit. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I played with a record player or a turntable, and um, I used to put army soldiers, little plastic soldiers on it. I remember watching them spin around, and the ones on the outside, they would fly off of the turntable. So let's use that as an example to explain the golf swing and how it, you, you can use that to work in your golf swing. Um, let's pay, take an imaginary penny, and we'll put it on the record player put it down there at 6 o'clock and then we turn it on to high speed, 78 RPM. Uh, the penny would go around about half a turn and then centrifugal force would make it fly off at 2 o'clock, let's say. Um, stop the turntable, pick the penny up, put it back at 6 o'clock, turn it on to the same speed and the same thing would happen. The penny would go around and fly off at 2 o'clock again. So I'm going to be a human turntable. I'm going to grab a few balls here and uh, during the golf swing, you want to rotate, make as perfect a rotation as you can, standing on two legs. So you see, you see good good players and touring professionals make this perfect rotation, what looks like around their spine and then into their follow through. So I'm going to mimic that, and I'm going to throw these three golf balls out there, kind of like the penny on the turntable. Uh, the arms are going to be kind of like the platter on the on the turntable, and my body will represent like the spindle or the the motor in the middle, drive shaft, and uh, uh, the ball is going to be the penny, so I'm just going to put the ball back here because the penny was free to fly off, so I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm just going to hold it in my hand or my palm, and, and then I'm going to rotate my torso through using using my hips and my lower body, and, and I'm not going to pull with my arm because that would ruin it, so I'm just going to just rotate through, and you'll see the ball fly out here, and they'll fly off in almost the same direction every time. In fact, I've had uh, times when I've thrown these balls and they roll out there and they touch one another. So it's a very accurate thing. All I'm doing is just rotating my torso through and letting my arm come along with it. All right. So in the golf swing, then what you have is you've got a club head. Um, and that's the penny on the turntable. So when you get to the top of the swing, your arms are the platter. Um, your, your wrists are relaxed, so the club's hinged and the the club head is just like the penny on the turntable, so then I'm just going to turn on my torso, and when I rotate through, centrifugal force is going to affect this and make it fly off, just like the pennies flew off and just like the balls flew out of my hand. Now, one of the things that uh, I want to let you know, if, 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 if I were holding on to the ball, okay, then I have to have timing. Okay, so when I come through, I'd have to let go of it at a certain point. And if I let go of it a little too early, it might go out to the right. And if I let go of it a little too late, it might go out to the left. So that's having control. And I don't know that I want to have control and or timing in my golf swing. What I want in my golf swing is I want freedom and centrifugal force. Okay, so if I have freedom and centrifugal force and I have perfect sequencing, sequencing is different than timing, if I have perfect sequence, then I can, I can have a very accurate um, reaction or centrifugal force can help me have a very accurate golf shot every time. Now, when I hold on to the golf club, I want to have a grip that allows the club to swing and I want to rotate as, as, in as tight a circle as I can. Because what happens is now I'm going to have a perfect bottom of the swing arc. If I allow that club head to fly out by centrifugal force and I rotate perfectly, then I can have a perfect bottom of the swing arc. All right. So if I have a perfect bottom of the swing arc, then I, I can put the ball right there at the bottom of the swing arc and I can get solid contact every time. Now. Many of my students understand that. They get that right off the bat. But what they don't understand is how the face gets to be straight or square at contact. They say, well, my face is always open or my face is always closed. So the second analogy I use is I try to tell people that that's kind of like uh, in England, they have those double-decker buses and they're top-heavy. So if you were driving one of those buses down the road and you came 70 miles an hour and you're coming into a 30 mile an hour corner, well if the bus driver tried to turn what would happen is that top heavy bus would flip over and, and it's going to happen the same way over time regardless of how, really how fast the, the bus is going. As long as it's going fast enough it's going to flip over. You could go 70, 80, 90 miles an hour that bus will flip over and, 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 and flip in the same spot every time as you try to go around the corner. So here's what we've got. We've got a golf club head where the weight 
is on actually the top of the shaft. If it were on the bottom, it'd be down here. We don't hold a golf club like that. We hold it with the club on the top side of the shaft. So as it swings, it's top heavy and has a tendency to open and close as we swing the club back and forth. All right, so at the top of the swing, we've got a penny on a turntable. And then all we do is we turn on our motor, which is our core, and we start unwinding. That's going to bring our arms around, which is like the platter. So the platter comes around, the penny flies off when centrifugal force affects it. I'm not trying to rush it through with my arms or my hands. That would ruin things, ruin the sequencing. So what happens is I just rotate through. Um, the, club fly, or the, ball, the club head flies out when centrifugal force affects it, and then it turns into a top-heavy bus headed towards a 30-mile-an-hour corner, which is the bottom of the swing arc. Club just flips over and you have perfect contact and squareness of contact virtually every time. Not relying on your control, relying on control that uh, science gives us. Uh, science of centrifugal force, inertia, and, and uh, the physics of the swing. So um, what, I, what I then do is I'll take a ball, I'm going to hold this club with two fingers and a thumb, and I'm just going to show you. This is a little demonstration I use when, I, when I'm trying to sh explain this all to, to my students. But if I just hold it with two fingers and a thumb, I have, I have almost no control here, um, and, and the club is very free swinging. So I pivot, and I pivot through, and you can see hardly ever any effort at all. The club face squares itself, and you can hit straight shots time after time. So try this in your uh, practice sessions next time you go out. Try to give your, your, the club freedom and centrifugal force and, and learn to use the laws of science and, and, uh, and hit the ball perfectly straight time after time. Thank you.